our brain is truly marvelous. Billions of neurons communicating each fraction of a second. The question is, how could it evolve? Welcome to Psyched. We all have our own identity. But what actually is an identity? Colloquially, we would say that an identity is just who somebody is. And your own identity, well, that's who you are. To be able to distinguish identities means to understand the differences in people's personalities, characteristics and behaviors. It means to be able to see everyone as unique and extract the individual traits of a person. The observation that everyone around us has their own personalities and identities seems trivial to us. Yet, it is not so trivial for many other species. A dog not being able to recognize their own mirror image. Or a sparrow not understanding that the cuckoo chick is not one of its own children. These are examples in the animal kingdom that show that identification of the self or others is an ability that is not developed equally in all species. Yet, as everything in this series, this ability has evolved over millions of years. Identifying and interacting with others requires some form of social cognition. Social cognition refers to the mechanism by which an animal acquires, processes, stores and acts on information from other individuals. In other words, social cognition is our ability to function in a social environment and interact with others. Now, organisms interacting with each other dates back to long before the first multicellular organisms. Specifically, whereas many bacteria species back then and now still reproduce asexually, the first sexual reproduction is thought to have arisen about 2 billion years ago. And what could be a better example of interacting with another than sexual reproduction? Now, Sexual reproduction in bacteria is distinct from true sexual reproduction in multicellular animals. But it marks the first point in history where an individual of a species had to interact with another to exchange genes and promote the survival of their own kind. In multicellular animals, and certainly in vertebrates, asexual reproduction is extremely rare. So the drive to interact with other members of the same species, even if it's only once in their life, is ingrained in our nervous system. Furthermore, with the Cambrian explosion, some 540 million years ago, we see a massive expansion of predator and prey animal species. The latter developing a multitude of defense mechanisms. One of these defense mechanisms is to form a group. And the benefits are appealing. The chances of falling prey are much smaller when you are surrounded by hundreds of species members. But it also means a loss of autonomy and streamlining your behavior to the others in the group. So that means you have to consider the actions of others. Group behaviors can be observed in modern vertebrates as well as invertebrate species and may have first evolved as early as 600 million years ago. Complex social structures, where animals have specific identities, can be observed in various insect species. Ants and bees have different castes, such as workers, drones and queens. Obviously, the identity of a bee cannot be compared to the complex identities that we observe in, for example, primates. But it demonstrates that the basic idea of social identification and personalities can be found throughout the animal kingdom and throughout evolutionary history. But let us return to the lineage of vertebrate species. Research in modern species of cichlids has shown that several brain regions in the telencephalon are associated with social behaviors. These regions include the dorsomedial and ventral telencephalon, which are homologous to the ventral tegmental area and nucleus accumbens in mammals. Interestingly, if these areas are increased, certain species of cichlids tend to show more monogamous behavior as well as more caring for their offspring. In contrast to simple group behavior, monogamy and offspring care, 
show a certain interest in specific members of a group, namely your partner and children. It shows the ability to distinguish and recognize different members of a group. Furthermore, in various cichlid species, there is a clear hierarchy in male dominance. Fascinatingly, dominant male courtship and aggressive behaviors change when being observed by other rival males. This suggests that these fish adapt their behavior depending on who is around them. To which extent our fish-like ancestors some 400 million years ago possessed such advanced social skills is unknown. But this research demonstrates that social cognition and distinguishing between different individuals in a group is a skill that can be achieved with a relatively small fish brain. In land animals, various degrees of social cognition have evolved at various occasions. For example, various bird species have incredible social skills, which is comparable to highly social primates. Given that the last common ancestor of primates and birds dates back to over 300 million years ago, it is most likely that their social abilities have evolved independently. Nevertheless, social behavior is driven by the same homologous brain areas in social birds and primates, suggesting that the basic structures for social skills were present in the brains before both groups diverged. As an example, let's look at corvids, like crows and ravens, which display high social intelligence. Ravens bond and maintain a relationship with a mate, typically for life, and this relationship with a partner is initiated years before they become reproductively active. In this non-breeder periods, ravens also form friendships with various other group members, working together to acquire food and other resources. Amazingly, corvids do not only have a mental representation of their own relationships, but also take into account the relationships of others. Such third-person knowledge is very reminiscent of the theory of mind, which is the ability to understand an other individual by ascribing mental states to them. In other words, I not only know what I know about you, but I also know what you know about me. Being able to consider the thoughts of another suggests that the other is seen as a unique individual. That means ravens ascribe specific identities to friends and foes around them. These incredible social skills of corvids underlie activation of brain regions in the laminar pallial nucleus and the arcopallium. These brain areas are homologous to the orbitofrontal cortex and the amygdala in mammals which are crucial areas for mammal social cognition. However, one feature that all mammals have in common and is different compared to all other animals is that they rear their young by providing them with food in the form of milk. As such, even solitary mammals that otherwise do not interact socially very often possess the social skills to form special bonds with their young. And this bond to your own offspring is far less common in non-mammals. In many cases, mammal mothers will protect their young for attackers, which even suggests a form of altruism. However, social cognition is obviously not similar in all mammals. Particularly mammals that gather food in groups through scavenging or hunting possess great social skills. Such animals include canids, dolphins, and various species of primate. Coordinated group activities typically requires special roles for individuals within a clan, as well as precise communication. As such, for these species, survival depends on being able to trust others. And it also means that they need to have knowledge about which clan members they cannot trust. For instance, Groups of macaques have complex hierarchical structures with various ranks. It is not uncommon to see some form of politics going on, where less dominant individuals try to outfox a more dominant member to find a mate or to acquire a higher rank in the hierarchy. As primates ourselves, human politics are essentially not that much different from the politics we see in monkey and ape groups. However, Human social cognition is a little different, since us humans possess language. 
According to the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis, our perceptions, thoughts and personalities are determined by our language. Although this hypothesis may not be true in its strongest form, it is no debate that the way we speak adds to our personality. Altogether, one thing that becomes clear from studying animals with high social intelligence is the following. The more complex social dynamics are in a group of animals, the more different each individual of a group is. In other words, higher social intelligence correlates with more variability between individuals. And as a consequence, these animals tend to have distinguishable personalities and their own identity. Now, we have come to the end of this series about the evolution of the brain. We hope you have enjoyed it and we hope to see you back in other series about the brain on our channel.